Good afternoon. Uh, it's Vaughan Gething, and thank you for joining me today as we move to a new three times a week briefing about the coronavirus position here in Wales. Today, I want to update you about the latest situation in the parts of Wales which are causing us the most concern at present. But first, I want to remind you about the changes in the rules which have come into force today across Wales. As the First Minister said on Friday, these changes are being put in place to help prevent a fresh coronavirus crisis in Wales. Cases are rising overall in Wales and we are seeing a deteriorating position beyond our borders. The latest advice from the Welsh Government Technical Advisory Cell will be published this week. It says the pattern of increasing cases is similar to the situation we faced in early February. It says action should be taken now to prevent significant harm or another full lockdown. None of us want to see large numbers of seriously ill people in our hospitals again, and none of us want to see large numbers of people dying again from this virus. From today, face coverings must be worn in all indoor public places in Wales. Only six people from the same exclusive extended household group will be able to meet indoors. That applies to people's homes and indoor public places like pubs and restaurants. But if you can work from home, you should continue to do so wherever possible. Now, as you'll be able to see shortly from the slide, there are a number of areas in South Wales where cases of coronavirus have risen sharply in the recent past. Those are in the Caffili Borough, in Merthyr Tydfil, in Rhondda Cynan Taff and Newport. We're working closely with each of the local authorities and public health experts to understand these rises and to put in place measures to help control the spread of the virus. There are many similarities between the rises in each of the areas, including socialising indoors and at home without social distancing and imported cases from holiday travel. We're also updating our coronavirus control plan to increase the range of measures that we have to respond to local outbreak. These include actions which have been introduced elsewhere in the UK, Ireland and further afield. These include the possible introduction of curfews, restricting alcohol sales and changing pub operations, including the possibility of shorter opening hours or only selling alcohol with food. You will, of course, be aware that local restrictions were introduced in the Caffili Borough last week to help reduce the spread of coronavirus. The three specific in, uh, restrictions introduced were face coverings to be worn in all indoor public places, no meetings indoors, that means extended households have been suspended for the time being, and people are not able to enter or leave the borough unless they have a reasonable excuse. I know that these new rules will be difficult for many people who live in the Caffili area. For some, they'll feel like an imposition and an inconvenience. But the feedback we've had from the police has been positive and compliance has been good. We are continuing to see new cases, which is to be expected, due to the time between infection and symptoms. It could still be a further two weeks before we reach a peak. We are, however, seeing a change in the pattern of infection, with more people now testing uh, in their 40s and 50s testing positive. The situation in Merthyr Tidwell is more complex. There is a cluster of cases linked to people working in a company. We're also seeing cases linked to the Caffili Borough, as well as those associated with socialising without social distance and imported cases from holiday travel. In Rhondda Cynan Taff, the cases are largely centred on the lower Rhondda Valley and are again linked to people socialising without social distancing and returning from holidays. We've also seen a small cluster of cases linked to a caravan park. Both Rhondda Cynan Taff and Merthyr Tidbo local authorities introduced a series of local measures on Thursday to help control the spread of the virus. We're working very closely with both local authorities to see whether further action is needed including local restrictions. In Newport, we're seeing a rapid rise in cases following a similar pattern to what we saw earlier in Caffili. At the heart of it, a 
appears to be a party over the bank holiday weekend, which led to 18 new cases of coronavirus, many of whom visited other venues on nights out whilst infectious. Public Health Wales yesterday asked people who had visited a list of bars and pubs in the city to be aware of the symptoms of coronavirus. Before I take questions, I should say a few words about the issues we've been experiencing with Lighthouse Lab uh, testing, which came to a head over this weekend. We started community testing in Rhonda at the end of the week, but this has been hampered by the ongoing issues with the UK government's Lighthouse Lab system, and that plainly isn't acceptable. Late on Friday night, a unilateral decision was made within the UK government to reduce lighthouse testing capacity at all mobile testing units in Wales, including the Rhonda, to just 60. We intervened and helped to increase this over the weekend. And crucially, the Health Board, the local authority and the Welsh Ambulance Service also made extra testing capacity available to cope with the demand. These are not the only issues we're experiencing with the UK-wide system at the moment. I know there are a number of cases where people are trying to book a test at drive-in centres and finding them either fully booked or being told to go to a centre many hundreds of miles away. I've spoken with the UK Secretary of State about this on a number of occasions, including on Saturday, where we agreed some immediate action to protect capacity in areas experiencing higher incidence and spikes and to make sure that unilateral restrictions are not placed on Wales again. But we have to see an urgent and sustainable solution to these ongoing issues affecting the Lighthouse Lab system. In the meantime, we are taking steps. We've invested to boost our testing capacity, and we're taking urgent action to switch over testing facilities to Welsh laboratories to increase capacity through our mobile testing units, whilst the UK government resolves the issues with the Lighthouse system. Thank you. I'll now start taking questions, and I think today we're starting with Adrian Masters from ITV Wales. Thank you, Minister. You can I pick up on those um, uh, testing problems that you've just discussed. You said it was unacceptable the um, uh, the issues in the, with the UK system. Has it been a mistake to rely so much on being part of the UK system? And I suppose related to that, but but also separate is. Um, it, Aren't you, as a Welsh government, accountable to um, the uh, Welsh government hasn't used all its uh, testing capacity, and whilst labs are not working uh, twenty-four hours, couldn't you have been spending more time beefing up Welsh testing? Well, I think there are a couple of different issues there, Aidan. You'll recall when the UK Lighthouse Lab program was introduced, we didn't take part initially in Wales because we didn't have the flow of data. So we'd have known that Welsh residents were getting a test, but not what the results were. So they weren't available within our testing system. And that's crucial for contact tracing to work. We resolved those issues, we're now taking part. And to be fair, up until the last few weeks, the Lighthouse Lab system worked pretty well. There were a reliable number of tests, people got their results back in a reasonable period of time, and the data came to our contact tracers who were able to do their job. And the contact tracing system is working well, as you know, here in Wales. The challenges of where we are now highlight some of the problems about not being able to cope with not so much the sampling, but getting those samples taken and getting the results done within the labs. That's where the challenge is. Now, this is always a challenge about balancing what we're able to do. There's a UK-run and funded programme that should be providing a significant amount of tests across each of the four nations and has done so until recently. The challenge is how quickly it's able to rescale itself up to deal with the demand. All of us have known in all of the health departments across all four nations that autumn and the winter is likely to be the most demanding period of time. With more coughs, colds and other challenges that mimic the symptoms of coronavirus, as well, of course, as the pinch point of school return and university return. So this is happening at a particularly difficult time for all of us. And if Matt Hancock were here today answering your question about whether this is acceptable or not, I don't think he'd pretend that this is acceptable. It's a matter to be resolved as urgently as possible, but I don't think it's going to be resolved for a number of weeks, and that follows the conversation, a constructive conversation that all four health ministers had at the end of last week. That's why we are moving part of our capacity from NHS Wales labs to make sure that mobile testing units 
are run through Welsh slabs to make sure they've got enough capacity if we do see further spikes to move those units around whilst the lighthouse lab issues are being resolved. We've always needed to build up our own Welsh testing resources to cope with the spikes and demand that we think we're going to see through autumn and winter, as well as protecting capacity if we need to move that. For example, if we see outbreaks in care homes, if we see more people coming into our hospitals where those tests are already run and have continued to be run through our NHS Wales labs. So it's about the balance of all of those there. I wish there were a perfect answer and an easy one in all of this but it is about doing what we can doing the right thing here in wales moving the resources we have around to cope with the challenges in lighthouse labs and needing to see an urgent resolution at uk level to make sure that we don't have this issue running through the autumn and the winter because we may need to make choices within the next few weeks on a local level and potentially on a national level because the point that i made earlier is i think is really important we think we're in an equivalent period of time now to the one we faced in early February. In early February, we faced a position where we didn't have the range of knowledge we have now, but we went into a national lockdown in essentially the third week of March. So there's a period of weeks for us to resolve some of the challenges we have, which is why the appeal to people to reconsider the choices we're making, who we're seeing, how many people we're seeing, because otherwise we may need to make more local lockdown choices or potentially a national lockdown with all the interruption that that causes. Thank you, and um, can I also ask you a little more about um, enforcement measures? You and the First Minister have uh, increased enforcement, um, similarly uh, uh, in other parts of the UK, there was increased enforcement of these regulations in pubs, restaurants, uh, other um, settings. Isn't that likely to be too little, too late? Um, because uh, sort of strict enforcement should have happened earlier. Have you been too reliant on goodwill and the idea that people will comply? I think there are two things here, Aidan. The first is there are still choices for us to make if we're going out to use a pub or a restaurant, and there are choices that businesses need to make. They need to follow the rules. So businesses need to do their part, and to be fair, local authorities have been visiting premises. Because of the challenges they've seen in a larger number of businesses they had concerns about, there's more concerted action by local authorities across the country. You'll have seen that Caerphilly have increased their enforcement. I spoke with the leader of Newport today. They're increasing their enforcement activity. Uh, and Ron the Cunnantaf closed a pub uh, in the last few days because uh, it wasn't following the rules. They've also, of course, issued enforcement notices uh, against supermarkets. So it's really important that businesses play their part. But even if a business is doing what it should do, we still have choices. So that means people not going into pubs and restaurants in more mixed groups than the rules say we should do. Uh, going out with six people from six different households, if one of you has coronavirus, that could then go into six different households and you can see how the change of transmission could spread quite rapidly. So it's important that we stick with the rules that we've got about limiting our contact to our extended households. Otherwise, we may not just see a larger number of cases, but all of the consequences in closing down a range of businesses. That has consequences for people's livelihood. There's economic harm that can lead to health harm as well. And crucially, the spread of coronavirus and our ability to control it, the drastic measures that we took in having a national lockdown, is not something that I want to return to if we can avoid it. But if it's necessary, then that's what we will do. So a message for all of us about our behaviour and a message for businesses to do their part and to follow the rules. Thank you, Adrian. I've now got James Williams on BBC Wales. Thank you very much, Minister. Can I just pick up again on the Lighthouse Labs uh, question? Um, obviously, you've got a mix of Welsh NHS laboratories and Lighthouse Labs that you're using at the moment. But you, you knew that there were problems with the Lighthouse Labs before this weekend. So... Couldn't you have made a decision a bit earlier to shift to using more of your capacity in Welsh NHS labs, especially given that you've got a daily capacity of 15,000 tests, or over 15,000 tests in Welsh NHS labs. On Saturday, only around 11,000 tests were conducted in total. So, so there seems to be spare capacity in Welsh NHS labs. Is there a problem with sort of shifting to using the capacity? And then separately, can I also ask, um, can you just explain why care homes in North Wales are shifting from 
for weekly testing of GT4. Okay, so on the switch of our resources, I've been talking with my officials during this week about trying to move more resources from our mobile testing units. They're the ones we move around, set up walk-in centres uh, on a, on a pop-up basis, if you like, where we understand there's a spike in testing. Now, we have three of those at present run through the Welsh Ambulance Service. All of those tests go back into our NHS Wales labs. Other mobile units, we help to decide where they're going, but then once we've decided where they're going to go, the results in those typically go back to be uh, tested within the Lighthouse uh, laboratories. Now, we're going to move more of those mobile units to NHS Wales labs to protect our ability to rapidly move into communities of concern, to undertake more targeted testing and to make sure we've got those testing figures coming back within our NHS Wales system. What we saw on Friday, though, was a surprise and unilateral choice made at official level uh, to significantly reduce the numbers. Our understanding of that is that they didn't properly account for the outbreak in heightened areas of concern within not just Wales but Scotland and Northern Ireland too. And that's my point about needing to make sure that that unilateral choice does not happen again. Because within Wales, if we know that there isn't going to be as much testing capacity available, we would then make choices about our highest priority areas. And that again reinforces why there's a need to move some of our capacity back into NHS Wales. But we need to have some of that capacity protected for the autumn and the winter. And you'll know we're investing in more staff to make sure we can turn around more tests within the NHS Wales system. The position on care homes is that within North Wales, we had a slightly higher incidence than the rest of the country and we moved from a weekly testing regime to every fortnight. The good news is that in North Wales, uh, we have a very low instance of tests coming back positive and they're false positives in the main in North Wales. So we're moving as we did in the rest of the country to a fortnightly programme. That's still a regular review of testing and we need to make sure those results are coming back quickly enough to be of value. Where we're changing that though is in our heightened areas of concern. We've already moved to more regular testing in Caerphilly, understandably. We've already moving to more test regular testing of RCT and I suspect we'll do the same in Newport. And of course those three county boroughs have also made the decision, which I fully support, to end visiting to care homes. That's a difficult choice in terms of family and loved ones who can't see their friends and relatives within a home, but it's about protecting people within those homes. So it isn't simply about the regularity of our testing, it is about the control measures we have in place. And frankly, if at the start of this we were able to test care homes every two weeks, people would have recognised it as a very regular uh, point in testing to provide concern. But if we do have individual instances of true positive cases in care homes, then we're looking to test that environment more significantly in any event. So that's again one of the reasons to have our mobile testing units available within NHS Wales to come back to our own leads rapidly and predictably. Thank you. Uh, and you said that we're in a sort of similar position to where we were in early February and the less changes are made um, to halt the spread of the virus, you know, we could be looking at more stringent restrictions, potentially even a national lockdown again. Uh, you said that schools, as a government, that schools are a priority. Short of a national lockdown, does that mean, therefore, that, that schools, closing schools, would be the last thing that we would see? Well, yes, we've been really clear that we certainly don't want to close schools. So there'll be other closures and other restrictions in place first. Those could be the ones I potentially outlined about pubs, for example, about reducing their hours, or about having the same restrictions Ireland does, where you have to buy food at the same time as buying alcohol. It is, though, worth pointing out that it is possible to see an improvement. It's not a one-way escalator. We saw in Cardiff a few weeks ago, real concern. We've now seen reductions in the Cardiff figures over the last couple of weeks. So it is possible for us to see behaviour change, at least the less cases coming through. And that, I think, the point about early February is that if we had the opportunity to change behaviour in early February, we may have been able to avoid a national lockdown or we may have had the intelligence we now have to be able to introduce those measures earlier. And it's really important that people are honest with contact tracers when they have that information. So, you know, people who are reluctant to say what's happened, that means that the risks of taking more local lockdown measures or potentially national lockdown measures, it raises the prospect of doing that as well as a potential for harm. But whatever we do through the choices we make about local or national decisions, it remains a position of this government that we want to keep schools open, 
So other closures would take place first to protect our ability to keep children in school because we know the significant harm it does to children's well-being in the here and now from having schools closed as well as the harm to their future prospects. Thank you James and I've got Laura Clements from Wales Online. Uh, thank you, Deputy Minister. A um, couple of questions for me. First one, um, on Tuesday, Dr Sarah Atkin, the Director of Public Health at the Rhine Devon, uh, said that all health boards have practised the local lockdown a couple of weeks ago. So does that mean that the surge in cases was always considered inevitable as a result of the increased freedom that people had in recent weeks and months? And therefore, do, do you think the amount of extra lockdown uh, feels can perhaps be put to? No, I think it's, the, it's sensible planning. We've been getting ready for our winter plan that I'll be launching tomorrow. And within that, we've had to look through a range of scenarios about what is possible, uh, as well as looking at what that then means we need to do. So we've looked at how we could go about increasing our critical care capacity again. We've had to look at how we'll have uh, a different network of field hospitals that we may need to have in place if there is uh, a further surge. We would look at what that will mean in terms of changing different parts of the way our healthcare system works. We would look different to the position we're in within March because we're trying to protect some streams of activity, so some elective care, some different forms of treatment that I took the decision to end on the 13th of March. We may be able to protect more of that going through this autumn and winter. But the challenge comes back to how we've chosen to behave through the summer and going into the autumn. We suppressed coronavirus pretty significantly through the summer. We were in a position with low levels of transmission to have further easements. The challenge is that we've seen some people relaxing too much perhaps and small instances where people know, f know that they're breaking the rules and in particular larger social gatherings in people's homes and a couple of businesses uh, that have uh, not enforced the rules in terms of the way their customers behave. Now, that's a challenge for us. And we see, as I said in Caffili, that the infection rate has moved. So more people over 40 and over 50 are testing positive and their risks of harm are much greater than fit and healthy people in their teens and 20s. So the risks are there. And of course, it's important that our health and social care system prepares for what might come through the autumn and the winter. And that's entirely the right thing to do. Our ability to keep out of lockdown depends on the choices that each one of us is prepared to make to help keep Wales safe. Okay, thanks. Uh, second question. Um, what should people do if they see others, for example their neighbours, breaking the new rules? And if the answer is to call the police, um, can our four uh, forces cope with that additional demand? Well, it always depends about you know, your, the ability you have to have conversations with other people. Some people have a relationship with their neighbours where they can talk with each other. Others may not feel comfortable at pointing out that some behaviour shouldn't take place. People having large house parties are plainly a problem. And you'll see within England that some people have been fined the maximum £10,000 level. We actually want to engage with people first to try to make sure that behaviour doesn't happen. So if people are asked to leave premises, they do so and do so quickly and responsibly. But the starting point is for that not to happen in the first place. I think there's a very clear message about the risks of indoor contact in people's home from people from a large number of different households. The rules we have allow four different households to group together and to see each other indoors with no more than six people accepting young, young children to be in that place at any one time. We want to maintain the contact people have and value. We recognise the value that provides to a range of people. But if we continue to see behaviour that isn't responsible, if we see behaviour that leads to an increase in cases, then as well as the potential for the police to undertake enforcement, and you've heard from the Chief Constable in Gwent, who's been clear that they will take enforcement action where it's needed, we actually want to get to a position where we can avoid having local and national lockdowns. That's the objective. But if it's the choice between a lockdown or accepting large amounts of harm, large numbers of people going into hospitals or dying from the virus, I'm very clear that we will choose to introduce more local and potentially national lockdown measures to help keep Wales safe. Thank you, Laura. I've now got Dan Bevan from LBC. Thank you, Health Minister. Good afternoon. This morning I was speaking to members of the public about the new face mask rules. It became apparent that some are intending on willingly flouting these rules. What is your message 
to those people. As you mentioned there, that we're heading for February, uh, or give or take, regarding coronavirus cases. Does that mean that we're potentially seven weeks away from coronavirus lockdown? If there isn't a change in behaviour, we could well be not just seven weeks away from a potential NASA lockdown, but potentially much quicker. Uh, if we see cases continue to rise, with the intelligence and information we have now, with the significant contact tracing we have, then we may be in a position to make that decision and need to make that decision sooner than the seven-week period of time. It does, I think, say to the public that there is a limited period of weeks for us to reconsider the choices we're making and to behave in a different way if we are to avoid more local lockdowns or a national lockdown. That includes people who are willingly breaking the rules. The rules will be enforced. We want to engage with people, to persuade people, but ultimately if people want to break the rules, then they'll find there are consequences that come from that. The rules are here for all of us. The rules are here for the benefit of all of us, and they apply to all of us. So I really hope that people take that message on board Otherwise, we may have to take further measures that will affect all of us in different ways. Thank you. And with regards to the plans for field hospitals, we know that Dragon's Park Hospital will now be decommissioned, hands back to the WIU. There will also be a new unit built onto the side of University Hospital of Wales. But what are your plans for field hospitals that have already been effectively multiple? How many do you want to have? We'll be giving some more detail on field hospitals in, within our winter plan, but we've got a planning scenario that our health boards have worked with us on, where we understand we will have field hospitals within and serving each health board area. It's about the numbers that we think we're going to need, but again, this depends on the behaviour of the public. We saw in the first wave that we didn't need to use the significant field hospital capacity that we'd built up in large measure because people followed the rules, because the first national lockdown did very effectively suppress the spread of coronavirus. Despite that, we saw uh, significant numbers of very ill people in our hospitals, and of course, we saw significant loss of life. Now, that's what we're trying to avoid. So we will have a network of field hospitals in place. We will be providing more detail on that, but it comes back to the choices that each of us are prepared to make. The government has a responsibility, but each and every one of us has a share of responsibility too. Thank you, Dan. I've now got Rob Taylor from Wrexham.com. Just one second. Uh, you've spoken to possibly parallels to earlier in the year. One early analysis was that the pandemic was hitting Wales from east to west, south to north. And the technical advisory cell also reported that initial spread from North Wales followed the major routes from England, from Chester and Liverpool. And last week, Professor Dan Sam said the current trends are moving away from specific hotspots and there's a more general increasing geographical trend across the UK. Can you speak about the trend geographically in Wales, and is it following the same previous pattern? Well, it's broadly similar, but it's a mixed picture. You've seen the hotspots in South Wales. We're seeing a, a modest increase in some authorities uh, within North Wales, but what's really important for us is the information we're getting from our contact tracing service, because that allows us to understand whether there are specific clusters we can trace and understand a link back to cases, and that people then follow the advice they're given to isolate, or whether we are seeing uh, more significant uh, community transmission. That again underpins my point that it's really, really important that people are honest with contact tracers, that they tell them what they've been doing, and they tell them who they've seen, because that's the way that we can protect those individuals, families and communities, and try to avoid uh, more significant local or potentially national action. We're still at the point though where despite being in an equivalent of February, we can make a difference in the spread of coronavirus and in protecting people from harm. As I say, we've seen in Cardiff a reduction in cases from a couple of weeks ago, so it is possible for all of us to make a real difference. And that, I think, is really important. So there's, as I say, responsibility for the government, our health service, to make the right choices to protect people, but equally, we all have individual responsibilities to protect the people around us and the people we'll come into contact with. Thank you. And the current weekly figures for inpatient confirmed cases in North Wales is similar as it was when lockdown began. And a month later is when we hit our peak. If there is a similar quick rise, can you guarantee the country is equipped and won't run out of be it PPE, oxygen or similar resources? 
we are in a better position than we were in in the third week of March when we went into national lockdown. Uh, I recall in these press conferences some very difficult days when it came to PPE provision. Uh, we've significantly restocked our provision for PPE. We have uh, a range of orders still to come in, but we're in a much better position now than previously. But even with that additional assurance, it's still the case that we don't want our health and social care staff using even more significant amounts of PPE because we want to avoid more cases of COVID coming in to our health and care system. So again, it still goes back to even with that better provision and the assurance the public should take from that, that should not lead to risk-taking behaviour and avoiding or ignoring the rules that are in place, as I say, for the benefit of everyone to protect everyone. Be honest with contact tracers if you're if you're contacted, follow the rules on self-isolation and please make sure you follow the rules on limiting the number of contacts you're having because that is the way that we'll get through this and minimise the harm that will otherwise take place right across the country. And I've got Jonathan Hill from the South Wales Argus. Thank you, sir. Uh, the import in the city to observe social distancing and, and other rules. If cases here in Newport continue to rise at the rate we've seen in, in recent days, how long will it be before a decision is made to impose a, a local lockdown here? Well, it really does depend on the information that we get through each day. So there's a, a daily look at what happens, not just with our testing figures, but the intelligence we get from our Test Trace Protect service about how the infection is being spread and whether we can understand those routes of transmission. If we can, then we can effectively have a smart lockdown that targets people who have come into contact with infectious individuals rather than taking community-wide measures. But as, as well as the cases, as well as the intent, to go back to the point that there are choices that each of us need to make. So I'll be having meetings during the rest of the day. I've spoken with the leader of Newport already today, uh, and I'm likely to speak to leaders of the city during the day again, but we'll need to make choices each day about what is the right thing to do. But the, the starting point is people need to make choices about what we're doing if we're going to pubs, restaurants and other places. People need to make choices about who we're having within our own home where the most significant spread has taken place. So there isn't uh, a particular mechanistic time frame to this, but it's a daily point of looking at each of the areas of concern and needing to make choices throughout each day. Several schools in Newport have had to ask classes or, or even whole year groups to self-isolate uh, due to positive COVID cases. Um, and schools elsewhere have experienced similar things. Does the return to school pose more difficulties than you envisaged? Not in particular. I've had an opportunity to speak with the Education Minister over the last week about where we are with the return from schools. It's actually gone pretty smoothly with a very high attendance rate. What we've seen, though, with those classes or potential year groups have needed to isolate is in the instance of year groups, a challenge about uh, having proper bubbles of students who are in a consistent group and not mixing across a whole year. And even with the other cases, it, it is largely driven by adult behaviour. So the idea that teachers are at risk because they're in a classroom with children and young people is actually their contact with other members of staff within the school and needing to make sure they're socially distancing from their work colleagues. And it's the challenges we see with wider community transmission in some parts of the country, because some teaching staff have been involved in some of the events that we talk about. Teachers themselves attend events outside the school. So actually, the greater risk for school staff is other school staff within the school, not children, young people, and what's taking place within communities. That's why for our schools, it's really important. This isn't just about reinforcing behaviour within the school, but outside school as well. If you've got symptoms, get yourself a test, be honest with contact tracers, follow the advice you're given, and limit the number of contacts that you're having, and please follow the rules. Otherwise, we may well have to take further steps on local or potentially national lockdown measures. Thank you, Jonathan. We're finishing now with Andrew Forgray from the Daily Post. Uh, good afternoon, Minister. Um, if, if I could just pick up finally on, on uh, testing capacity again. Uh, there have been concerns that uh, 
Tennessee capacity has effectively been shifted from North Wales to South Wales. It, it's just a case, and it's another risk that um, the, 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 the door is being left open to the virus returning to North Wales, given its proximity to local lockdown areas in, across the border. We're not shifting capacity out of North Wales. Uh, that simply isn't the case. That's not what we're doing at all. And we're certainly not taking a region versus region approach. We're taking a responsible picture of the whole country and needing to understand where we have spikes. We have clusters that we need to deal with. We have communities that need more testing resources. That's where we'll move our mobile units around. So as you saw earlier in the course of the pandemic, where we needed to test on Anglesey and in the Wrexham area, we move resources into those parts of Wales to make sure the proper testing resources were available. And that was never seen here as a decision to deprioritise South Wales in favour of North Wales. It's simply about doing the right thing for the country. That's what we're doing and all the choices we make to help keep Wales safe. What is the right choice to make? What local measures do we need to take? And do we need to take further national measures? So that will continue to be my approach and the approach of this government. I hope that provides assurance to people, not just in North Wales, but across the country, that we really are seeing this in national terms and understanding what we need to do to help local people to make choices to keep yourselves safe. Uh, thank you, Minister. Just a, a quick final question. Um, it's just in reference to potential for a national lockdown. Uh, would Wales be prepared to go and get alone on this, uh, or would it prefer to uh, impose a national lockdown at the same time as the rest of the UK? The starting point is it isn't my objective to impose a national lockdown. My objective is to keep people safe, to keep people alive and well. And if people follow all the rules, you have a much better prospect of continuing with the freedoms that we've been able to join now compared to national lockdown from the end of March through April and May. That's what we're trying to do. The rules are there to allow us to carry on safely going about our business in a different way to the way we behaved at the start of this year. If, though, we see an increasing rise in coronavirus across the country, if we need to take local or national measures, then yes, of course, we'll be prepared to make those choices. Our preference, though, is to have a joined-up conversation across all four nations. That's why we've been calling for COBRA meetings. Uh, that's why we still think it's the right thing to do. I would much rather have a proper COBRA process we can report across all four nations about the picture that we see, to share information and intelligence, to share possible answers to the challenges we face, and then to be able to have a more unified communication message with every one of the four nations. If we're not able to do that, then we are prepared to make our own choices here in Wales, as indeed we did do when we went into national lockdown. That was a choice that we made with our powers, but we did it in concert with other UK nations. We made our own choices about the local lockdown measures in Caerphilly. Uh, from a health minister's point of view, though, we still continue talking with each other and we expect to have a conversation together again this week with our chief medical officers looking ahead to the autumn and the winter. I think it would be of the benefit of all of us if that's the sort of conversation that were taking place at a regular level between the first ministers and the prime minister and the assembled groups of people that help to make the COBRA process a more effective one for the extraordinary times that we continue to live through. I look forward to speaking to you again, uh, Andrew, but also to people across Wales as we continue with our unfinished fight in the coronavirus pandemic. Many thanks.